It was a revelation. It was an awakening for the entire city, quite frankly. Mr. Sachs told me that uh, he told Sorel that he has a woodworking shop in uh, Woodbridge, Ontario, and said if he wants to, he could spend the summer there doing his woodwork, <laughs> which happened to be a fact. So that's how Sorrel came to Toronto, that's how I met him. I was greatly impressed with him, and when I saw the wooden pieces and the earlier ones, which he had brought back from Israel, I said, there is a talent which has to be seen. And the very first exhibition we made was, in fact, the wooden pieces. And. Um, Mr. Sachs helped selling some. So what, what appealed to you about these? Uh, the composition, the way they're made. And uh, they, that they're very completed works of art. They are essentially pictures without a frame. And uh, I remember, we, in fact, I gave conferences. People came actually to the gallery, sat down, we put out chairs and everything else, and I talked about it. And I said how important this is at the time. Which was quite amazing, actually, that we had an audience. <laughs> so this is, those were the beginnings. And then from there on, of course, he became what we can truly say world famous. When I say this, I mean this is a 26-foot sculpture in the Olympic Park in Seoul, South Korea. He had a one-man show in Singapore. So he's really known all over the world. Completely married to his art. And that's as simple as I can put it, because nothing else counts. And he is in, con I would say, almost 24 hours concerned and thinking what he can do or what he could do if he had the ability still to do it, etc., etc. And this is one of the great, great. Uh, pains to him that he cannot actually execute what goes on in his mind. And that is, is a very, very heavy weight on him. And because he's really an artist through and through. And that's the only thing you can say when somebody is really a great artist. There's no, there's nothing else that counts.